politically correct speech takes over even the church. I have talked for years now about the greatest influence of the world upon the church world today is the fact that even the church now will only speak in politically correct tones. What do I mean? Why is it so dangerous? Stay tuned for today's edition of Live Prayer. What problems are you dealing with in your life right now? Do you feel like giving up? Times are hard and you're not strong. Well, I know the answer for you. And it will lead to the truth. And don't look back to yesterday. Now there are answers. Tomorrow's on Welcome to Live Prayer. It's waiting there. Here's your host, Bill Kelly. You can make it through. There is a hope. And welcome to Live Fair. I'm Bill Keller. It's good to have you with me on this Tuesday. As today, I'm going to talk to you about what I feel is one of the biggest problems, not just in our world today, but in the church today. And that's the fact that everybody has fallen into line with this politically correct world we live in. Now, I understand there's a time and place for everything. I understand there's a time to say certain things and a time not to say certain things. But we have been influenced by the world to such a degree about this whole issue of political correctness. It is now embraced by the church to the point the church is weak, ineffective, watered down because they've adopted this world mentality of speaking in politically correct terms. Trust me, this is a word today you do not want to miss because it identifies, quite honestly, one of the greatest problems we have in the church. I'm Bill Keller, founder of LivePrayer.com, the world's largest interactive Christian website. We reach a little over 2.4 million people every day via the Internet. I'd encourage you to come check us out at LivePrayer.com. Lots of great, unique content that changes every day. We've been online over 11 years now, and that's why for... The bulk of that time, we have been a website that people worldwide have come to in their time of need, their hour of need, to find strength, to find hope, to find answers. It's been a great honor to have overseen such a ministry these past 11 years. And I want to encourage you to go check it out, liveprayer.com. Again, an incredible treasure trove of content, unique, like you've never seen anywhere else. So come check us out at liveprayer.com. Also, don't forget, we are gearing up for our next Sunday service out at the, at the new 9-11 Christian Center at Ground Zero. We will be tying down this week our permanent facility that will open January 1st. So I'm looking forward to being able to make those announcements next week. If you're going to be in the New York area or if you want a good weekend trip, go on, come on up to New York and enjoy the city. And make sure you stop in for our 11 o'clock service at the New York Marriott, half a block from Ground Zero, where we're currently meeting every Sunday till the end of the year until we open our permanent facility January 1st. There, at that point, we will then be holding meetings literally 11, seven days a week, 24-7. We'll have our prayer room open. It's going to be an incredible, incredible facility that I believe is going to impact millions of lives. In the meantime, I created a vision video very short video to really share the vision of the 9-11 Christian Center. I want to play that for you right now, and I want you to just sit back and really embrace with me what God has called us to do at Ground Zero. I'm Bill Keller, founder of LivePrayer.com. Recently, it was publicized that the Muslims would be building a mosque at Ground Zero. Let me make sure you understand that this was a purposeful and premeditated act. This is not an accident. They already have many mosques in New York City. This was done in a very well orchestrated way. This mosque at Ground Zero will be a memorial to the greatest triumph of Islam in 1400 years, 9-11, 2001, when their Muslim brothers flew those planes into the World Trade Center towers. 
More of their Muslim brothers went into the Pentagon. Others headed to the Capitol were courageously ditched in the fields in Pennsylvania. But make no mistake about it, this mosque at Ground Zero is a memorial to the greatest triumph of Islam in 1400 years. It will be a place where they will teach this generation, future generation of Muslims, how to hate this nation, how to turn this nation into a Muslim land, which is their ultimate goal. They will teach people Sharia law, the law that Islam is governed by all over the world. What is our response as Christians? I thought and prayed hard about this. I decided that why hold another rally, another protest march, that a few hours after it over, it was over, everybody would go home and forget about it. Nothing would change. I realize there are many great efforts to try to stop this mosque from being constructed. And while I pray they're effective, and while I pray that they will be successful, in my heart of hearts, I know that the Muslims, with their massive amounts of money, will be ultimately victorious. This mosque will be built. We don't need another protest. What we need is a bold, visible response to what the Muslims are about ready to do at Ground Zero. That response is the 9-11 Christian Center at Ground Zero. We aren't going there with swords. We're going there with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is like Elijah on that wonderful day where he invited the prophets of Baal to Mount Carmel and said, let's see whose God answers by fire. Today, I issue that same challenge to Imam Faisal Rao, the Imam of the Ground Zero Mosque. You bring your false God, I'll bring the God of the Bible, and we will see which God answers by fire. Phase one, we will hold services every Sunday, starting September 5th at 11 o'clock through the end of the year at the New York Marriott, right by Ground Zero. As of January 1st, we'll move into our permanent facility at Ground Zero, where we will hold evangelistic meetings seven days a week. We will have a special 9-11 memorial prayer room for visitors to Ground Zero and those who work in the financial district, those who live in, in that area to come and pray. I know that as time goes on, the Muslims will try to silence me. They will try even to kill me. But the gospel won't be stopped. And I need you to help me today. I need you to stand with me. Many people are outraged by what is about ready to happen at Ground Zero. And people say, how can my voice be heard? You can stand with me and the 9-11 Christian Center. Go to my website, liveprayer.com. On the left menu bar, click on the donation link. There is a secure server there where you can give via a major credit card, you can give via PayPal, or you can just drop a check to our corporate headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. You can take a stand against this mosque, a meaningful stand, a stand that not only is going to is going to drown out the lies of Islam, but it's going to lead souls to faith in Jesus Christ. I believe it's going to spark a revival in the city of New York, and I believe it's going to turn this nation back to God and His truth. Please, stand with me today. Your voice can be heard. You can make a difference. The 9-11 Christian Center at Ground Zero is the answer to this mosque and for this nation. I'm Bill Kelly. That's the 9-11 Christian Center at Ground Zero. Hopefully you'll be able to make it to New York City before the end of the year and come join us for one of our great Sunday services there at the New York Marriott. All right, we've got our first break of the day. When I come back from this short commercial break, I'm going to share with you what I believe in my heart of hearts is probably the greatest problem we have in the church today, and that's the fact that the church has bought in to this worldly mentality of speaking in politically correct terms. It's a message you don't want to miss. I'll be right back. I'm Bill Keller of Live Prayer, and I need your help. God has challenged me to 
open the 9-11 Christian Center at Ground Zero. This is a response to the new mosque that's being built within a block of the, wor the World Trade Center towers used to stand. The Muslims are spending $110 million to build this mosque. God said to me to go put a Christian center within a block of Ground Zero, and that's what we're doing. We're going to open this center on Sunday, September 5th. I'll be flying personally to New York to hold those services every Sunday till the end of the year. And then starting January 1st, the center will literally be open 24-7. We'll hold evangelistic services there every day. We'll have a special 9-11 memorial prayer room so that those who come to New York City to visit that hallowed ground will have a place to come and meditate, pray, just spend some quiet time. This is a great undertaking. I can't do this alone. I need your help. To give a gift to the 9-11 Christian Center, you can go to liveprayer.com. Click on the donation link on the left menu bar. There you will find a secure server so you can make a gift with your major credit card or you can give via PayPal. Or if you want to just drop a check to us, that's great. You can send that to our headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. That address is on your screen. In the information line of your check, just put 9-11 Christian Center and your gift will go to this great undertaking. Islam is a 1,400-year-old lie from hell. The audacity of the Muslims to build a center in the shadows of the, where the Trade Center towers that their Muslim brothers knocked down, killing 3,000 innocent people, is a travesty. People are upset. I'm upset. But we're taking action. Sunday, September 5th. We will put our faith to the test as we open the 9-11 Christian Center at Ground Zero. I need your help. I need your prayers. I need your support. Thank you. God bless you. Welcome back to Live Prayer. Today I'm going to be talking to you about an issue that weighed heavy on my heart for years now. You know, the church is supposed to influence our culture, but sadly in the year of 2010, quite the opposite is true. The culture influences the church. Now, I could run down a laundry list of ways this has happened, but the one I want to focus on today is the politically correct speech you hear coming from the pulpits of our churches around the country. You know, it's funny. After our initial service at the 9-11 Christian Center, I was asked over and over by different press people why I was so brutal on people who didn't believe in Jesus and how could I speak so angrily and mean about, about people who didn't want to follow the Bible and, and, and it's almost as I'm filled with hate for people who don't believe like Christians. And I said, no, quite the opposite. All I did was share the simple truth of the gospel from the Bible itself. I didn't make any of it up. There was no hatred, quite the, honest, uh, quite the opposite. That was a message of the greatest act of love there is. Hatred's when you don't love someone enough to tell them the truth. And if you believe the Bible's the truth that God gave to this world, then everything in it, is exactly the way God said.